Hello, my name is Dieter. I am a program manager in the PowerCAD team at Microsoft. And in this video, we will dive into plugin packages, which is a new way to upload your plugin code into Dataverse environments. Often when you develop plugins, you will also need some additional libraries, maybe a library to parse JSON strings. For example, if you have a plugin that needs to call an external web service to get some additional information, and this external service gives you a JSON response back then you need to be able to easily parse this JSON string so that you could extract the relevant values and use them in your plugin code. You could also have dependencies on other projects in your Visual Studio solution. For example, when you use early binding for your tables, then you have those generated classes, and then typically these classes are shared across your projects and then also in your plugin code. And then when you register your plugin, then you also need to make sure that you include those dependencies to those uh, other projects. In the past, we had to use a tool like Illmerge to merge all those additional assemblies and dependent projects in one huge assembly. Because in the plugin registration tool, you can only upload one plugin assembly to register one or more plugins. The creation of this merged assembly was often cumbersome and was sometimes a difficult process. From now on, we will make it a lot easier to use additional libraries in your plugins. You have now an additional option to use a plugin package to register plugins. You can use these new plugin packages either with the plugin registration tool or immediately from Visual Studio. This pack package is actually a NuGet package that gathers everything you need for your plugin. And this will also allow you to upload multiple dependent assemblies in this one single NuGet package. So this will make the registration of your plugins a lot easier. And when you register these packages, you will also have the option to attach them immediately to a solution. And this new capability of registering plugin packages will be the way forward in, this, in the future instead of registering a single assembly. OK, so now let's see a quick demo of how we could use these plugin packages. I've already created a small application to keep track of support tickets. And now we are going to add a plugin to get the follow-up activities from an external service. And then in our plugin, we're going to add these tasks to our ticket. So this is our application to manage our tickets. And when we create a new ticket, then we want to call an API. Um, and in this case, it's a, it's a dummy API that will return the to-do items that we then need to connect right, or attach to our uh, newly created ticket. So in this case, uh, we will receive a JSON string uh, with the information of all the uh, to-do items. So if we look at our Visual Studio environment, then uh, the first thing that you will need to do is, is you need to enable the Power Platform Tools extension. And so if you go to uh, the extensions and let's see the installed extensions, and then we see over here our Power Platform Tools extension. And this will enable uh, some additional capabilities in uh, Visual Studio. So first of all, uh, you will get your Power Platform Explorer. And if you navigate to Tools and then uh, connect to Dataverse, you will get the possibility to connect to a Dataverse environment and select the solution. And then and this solution will then be shown uh, in your Power Platform Explorer. And you will see the different components that you have in, your, uh, in that solution. And if you see like uh, at the end, plugin packages, uh, then this is also an environment where the plugin packages have been uh, enabled and that you can use that, uh, this capability. The other thing that we will see in our Visual Studio environment is that we have the possibility to create Power Platform solutions. In these Power Platform solutions, uh, we can also create uh, a plugin projects. I already created a plugin project uh, with our create ticket plugin. Uh, what exactly the, the, the plugin does in this case is, is less relevant. Uh, but, uh, once we're sure that we uh, are connected to a ticket and that we get the, the ticket information, uh, then uh, we are going to do that call to our, uh, to our API. And then we will res receive that uh, all those to-do items as a, as a JSON string. And, and then we need to convert that JSON string into uh, a to-do list. Uh, to be able to do this, uh, we are using uh, an additional library, uh, the, the, the Newtons of JSON library, and so that we can convert that uh, 
string into uh, into a list of in, into a list of items. Uh, to be able to do this, uh, we need to add uh, an additional uh, NuGet package. Uh, so if we uh, have a look at our NuGet packages uh, of our uh, project, and then we see that we also have that Newtonsoft JSON package and that we have uh, connected to our uh, to our plugin project. Eh? And then uh, when you uh, eventually register this, uh, this plugin project, and then we also need to make sure that we also have that uh, JSON uh, Newtonsoft JSON uh, package also included in that in that uh, in that assembly, and so or in, in that eventually in that package, and so that uh, when we deploy our or use our plugin in in our dataverse environment, and so that uh, once our plugin wants to convert this this string, and that we also have that additional library available uh, in our uh, in our environment. And then eventually, once we have that to-do list, and then we can uh, loop uh, over this to-do list, and then for each item, we are going to create a, a follow-up activity, uh, which is then connected to our newly created uh, ticket. So once we have this uh, this this code uh, built, and then we can also uh, deploy this uh, from uh, from within our Visual Studio environment, and then uh, we will uh, see over here and that we have our plugin package uh, this is our uh, newly deployed plugin package uh, with our plugin assembly and uh, we then uh, eventually also our uh, ticket uh, plugin uh, so and this package uh, will then contain everything what we need uh, uh, for our uh, plugin besides deploying it uh, from within your visual studio you also have the possibility to uh, create a new plugin package from uh, from within the Power Platform Explorer. And so we can uh, create a new package. And then we need to uh, select our uh, created uh, NuGet package. And so if we then also have a look at what is in this NuGet package uh, with the NuGet package explorer, and then we can see that we have our uh, demo plugins, uh, which is our plugin code, uh, but that we also have our additional uh, library, uh, and this can be uh, more uh, libraries than one, and uh, that is also included in that uh, in that package. And so then we say, and uh, uh, we upload this package, and then uh, remember, I also mentioned that we can immediately also connect this uh, to uh, to a solution, uh, and then we can uh, import our new get package in that solution. Uh, but uh, that's already being done uh, with uh, with the deploy, uh, so I'm not going to do this. Uh, but then if we uh, take a look at another perspective, uh, if we take a look at the plugin registration tool, uh, which is also a tool where you can upload uh, your uh, plugin assemblies, then uh, if you want to use the, the, the that latest capability of, uh, of also being able to, to register a plugin package, then uh, what you need to do uh, is uh, you need to enable a flag. Uh, you can find this flag in the appjson, uh, appsettings.json uh, file uh, in the plugin registration folder and so if you flip the switch uh, from false to true for uh, for this uh, for this flag then uh, you enable uh, the uh, capabilities to also register uh, a new package uh, uh, or uh, that you can also view uh, the the uh, registered uh, packages uh, by uh, displaying by package uh, but first uh, let's uh, refresh uh, so that we have the latest uh, situation so as you can see uh, you can find over here uh, our uh, newly created uh, demo plugins uh, plugin uh, so if we for example view it by package and then we can uh, also see our plugin package uh, with our plugin assembly uh, and then we have our create ticket plugin uh, and now we can register a new step uh, so let's say create uh, to our uh, ticket uh, and then we are going to do this uh, post operation uh, let's register this step and so now we have our step uh, for our plugin uh, for our uh, as plugin assembly uh, within our uh, within our package and so now everything is uh, is ready and so if we go back to our uh, application and uh, if we create now a new ticket then when we save and create this ticket and uh, we will do that call fetch uh, our uh, follow-up activities and uh, create those follow-up activities for this task uh, which you can see uh, over here 
So as a last thing, eh, we can also have a view. Eh? Remember, eh, you can uh, I, or you have to connect your uh, plugin package to a solution eh, so that it's immediately connected eh, to your solution. And so if you take a look eh, from that solution, then you will see that we now also have the plugin package uh, over here and where you can see that we have our package available and so that you can also easily bring this uh, from one environment to the uh, to another environment. And so the, with this, uh, I want to conclude uh, our demo. Uh, I hope this provides also a nice overview of what you can do uh, with uh, the new plugin packages. Uh, and uh, like I already mentioned, uh, this will be also be the way forward uh, and uh, uh, we will uh, move away from uh, from just registering uh, one plugin assembly and we will be using plugin packages.